Hi everyone, Dennis Cortez here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the basics of Figma and going over the basic UI elements and how you can create designs in Figma on your own. So when you first open Figma, you'll be greeted with your Recents tab. So because I've been a user of Figma for quite some time now, it's actually been about five years, I have a lot of old files in here. Um, I don't really work on my personal one too much. I'm always working on my work one during the week, during my full-time job. But you can see previews of some of the work that I've done, and you can kind of get some insights into some of the reasons that you have when you're on this page. So typically you can just jump right into what you're wanting, but I'm gonna show a little bit of the UI here as well. So if you click on your own name, you can go ahead and see your profile. You can see your username, your location, description, etc. And you can also see files or plugins that you've published to the community, which I'll go over in a second. You can also see teams, see what you've contributed to and see how all of your files are doing. So what this is cool for is seeing insights when you're on a team of design systems, or you can see contributions, who's working on what and the last activity, which is really helpful in the team setting. You can also see plugins. So it has your installed plugins. So these are some of the ones that I've been using. You can see in development ones. So ones that you have submitted and you're waiting to be approved or to submit them to, or you can see published ones that have already been published. You can see how they're performing and whatnot. I don't have any plugins myself. Uh, I definitely want to at some point, but you'll get some good insights on these and get some updates on them. And then finally, settings is just everything you'd expect to see. Um, your name, your handle, email, et cetera, et cetera. Standard stuff in here. You can also change your notifications. So this is helpful if you're in a public file or you're getting too many notifications on your email, you can go ahead and disable that. You can also work through your libraries. So if you have libraries within a team, um, which we'll get to in another video, you can go ahead and enable those for all your files. Secondly, you can go into search, which is really nice because immediately just opens the search tab. I can search for a file here and I can just go straight to it. You can also search for projects and people, which is helpful as well. And you can even search within the community if you change this tab here. Alternatively, you can also search by relevance or you can search by name, last modified or when it was created. And you also have a list versus a grid view. I personally prefer the grid view. Recents, we've went over. You can also filter these alphabetically, date created, ascending, descending, etc. And then finally, the community tab, which is really helpful. You can go ahead and see what everybody is working on in the community and things that they publish for you to use. Some of these, they do require you purchase a license, just kind of based on who it is and what, what company has published it and what it's for. But you can find some really good, useful elements in here that the community has published themselves. You can also see plugins here. So it looks like it's loading my plugins and we can go ahead and get a view of some of the most popular plugins. You can also see recent plugins and see ones that people have submitted recently. And again, it's loading, so I'm assuming there's a lot. But you can also search as well, which is nice. So if I search on Splash, I would go ahead and pull up on Splash and anything that is related to that. You can go ahead and see how many people have installed it and see whether you have it installed or not. And this last tab, Drafts, is just things that you have made but you haven't put into a project. And then finally, Deleted, you could see a bunch of old work in here and stuff that I'm not using. Um, this is just what you've deleted, pretty self-explanatory, and you can go ahead and recover these or reuse them if you need. Finally, here we have Teams. Um, so you won't see much here because I'm a personal user. So you just have like my studio, which is my freelance work. You can go ahead and make some for yourself. You can make some public. You can see who your members are and then the settings for that team. And down here, you can go ahead and create a new team. But for now, we won't be doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a draft here. You can just go ahead and press this plus button to make a new file. And that will open a file named Untitled. So you can name your file just by clicking on the name here. Here, it'll tell you what project it's in. For now, I don't have any projects that I wanna add this to. But if you're working with a team, or you wanna be more organized with what you're working on, you can make projects and then you can put them in there. But for now, we'll just leave this in drafts. Here on your left is your layers panel. So here you'll see layers, which we will get into in a sec. 
and you also have assets. So here you'll see components and libraries that you create and you have a nice little search panel. So if you need to search through assets or components that you have, they will pop up here and then you can just go ahead and drag them in for your use. And then finally, you'll see pages. Pages are very nice for organizing, which I can get into in another video if you'd like. We're just gonna go ahead and name this example. So this is nice if you're working on an app, for example, and you want to put, you know, maybe the certain tabs like home, account, and then any of the actions that your app does. Above the layers panel, you have your tools. So in this first one, you have your hamburger menu. This will have all of your file edit and whatnot. So these are a lot of options that you can work through. I'm not gonna go over all of them right now in this video. Um, you can either click here and start searching, but there's also on a Mac, it's command forward slash, and it'll pull up this search immediately. So for example, I can go ahead and search for a plugin press enter and then automatically run that plugin, which is very helpful. Secondly, you have your selection tool. So you can either use move, which will move assets around on the artboard that you're working on, or you can go ahead and scale, which will scale things up while keeping the aspect ratio. We have your region tool, which holds your frame and your slice. Frame is probably one of the biggest things that you'll be using. Um, if you're familiar with Sketch or with Photoshop, frame is basically the equivalent of an artboard. However, in Figma, frames can do a bit more than what artboards can. Then you have your shape tool. So you have rectangles, lines, arrows, whatnot. And you have pen tool and your pencil tool. So that's for creating vector elements your text tool, which is pretty self-explanatory, this hand tool, which lets you pan around the workspace that you're working with, or you can alternatively hold spacebar. And then finally is this comment. So with this, you can click anywhere on a file that you're working on. You can tag people in your team and just leave yourself notes and say, remember this, or some sort of feedback that you're working through. In the middle, you have the name and your project, like I went over. And then over on the right, you have who is working in this file. If you had a few people in this file, for example, you would see yourself, you would see whoever else is in this file with different colors or with their avatar. Share, so this lets you send it to anyone. So I could invite an example email and you can change what they can do in this file. So if you only want them to view like a client or they can edit for like a teammate and you can go ahead and send that invite. I won't send that for now. And then you can change the file settings and how this share works. So you can either make it so that anyone can view, only view it or edit it and whatnot. And then you see who are the members of this file. So for right now, you're just gonna see me, who's the owner. You can copy a link, you can get an embed code. And this selection here is actually very helpful. If you have a frame selected, which again is like an artboard in Sketch or Photoshop. But if you have a frame selected, you can actually link to the specific frame so that when someone opens the link, they will go specifically to that frame that you're wanting them to see. Next, you have your prototype play button, which is also present, which lets you open your prototype in a separate screen with all the UI hidden and all of your fixed elements positioned correctly. And then you have your zoom here, so I don't really use this too much. I prefer the plus and minus buttons on my keyboard. Over here on the right, you have your control panel. So here you'll see design, prototype, and code. For design, you're not seeing too much for right now because we don't have any elements on the board and we have nothing selected, but I'll go over that. You have your background, so you can change the background of your entire file using this. And then you can also hide or show the background. In prototype, you're able to do prototyping options, which I won't get into in this video, but I will in a future video. But for now, you just know that these are here. And then your code panel is your final one. So this is very helpful when you're passing off to developers. They have CSS, iOS, and Android here. You also have different ways to view this code. And this is very helpful because engineers can click on elements and see the code update. So let's get back to actually making something within this file. So first, I'm going to start with a frame. Within the frames, it's nice because they give you ones that you can start off with. So for example, let's do an iPhone. So it'll automatically pull up a frame here. And you have properties within this frame once you select it. So you have the width, the height. You also have the X and Y positions and you can choose whether it's a frame or a group, or you can change the sizing of this frame. You also see here on the left, my layers panel gets updated. So now I have this frame within here. 
And once I start adding elements within here, if I click on this rectangle, for example, and go ahead and make this in here, and now you'll see that it pulls up on this layers panel. So I can center this, get a nice little indicator that it's in the center. And then the same thing here, I can see the X position and Y position within this frame, and also the width and height. These are your constraints, which I will go over in another video. And then you can also fix the position when scrolling, which is for prototypes. And once you do that, you can see fixed and scrolls update within your layers. If you want to change the names of your layers, you can double click on a frame, for example, Let's just call this iPhone, and then this rectangle button. Maybe resize it, it's very easy to do that. You can also change the sizing here, and then you have your layer, which will let you change the blending mode. So this is helpful in, for more photography elements I've found, or for changing hues of images or UI elements. Then you have your fill. These four dots here will represent your libraries. So you can see I have just personal colors and Cortez Studio colors, and you can select from these, and it'll update this here and you can actually have a drop down here for those. This will break the style, so it'll detach it and it'll go back to what we had before. And just to keep things simple, let's just do this. You can either input your hex code in here or you can click on the color and go ahead and drag around what color you're wanting. You can also update the hex code here. You can see RGB, CSS, however you want to do it. And then you also have an eyedropper tool. To add a gradient, you have a different type of fill style here and you have linear, radial, angular, diamond, or image. So image, you can actually upload an image into here. It'll let you choose the image and you can also do some minor updates to the image. And then for a gradient, you can go here. You can add different points on here just by clicking and then you can adjust them based on that. And then to delete them, you just select it, press your delete key. And then here you'll, sh you'll see that it's not showing up. That's because we have our opacity to zero, which you can also change in here. But let's go ahead and make this back to a solid. You can also add strokes here just by doing this plus. And then you have a bunch of controls in here, which you can change the same way that you did with fill. Let's select this teal, make it a bit darker. And then this button, also we could add some rounded corners, which is what this is here. Let's maybe do six. Your effects are where your drop shadow and blurs come into play. So you can go ahead and choose one of these, but let's just do a drop shadow. So you can click this icon here on the left and change these values based on what you're needing and also change the color and the opacity of that. So let's go ahead and select this maybe and then lower the opacity. So a nice subtle shadow here. And finally, you have your export. So I've made another video on this if you'd like to go check it out, but you're able to export anything from here and just go ahead and press export and it'll bring up your finder which will let you export anything and rename it as you need. In this design panel, you can also see alignment options, which is very helpful. So I can go ahead and align this to the left or to the top. Alternatively, you can use Option on Mac and WASD to actually align these. So if I want to do to the bottom, I do Option S to the left, Option A. If I want to vertically and horizontally align this, I can do Option B which will do vertical alignment, and then option H, which will do horizontal alignment. And that's about it for going over the basic UI elements of Figma. I also have a lot of videos that I'm working on and are also already on my channel that goes over some more specific examples of what you can do in Figma. If you have any questions about this video or want me to make any specific videos in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe so that you know when I have more videos that come out on Figma and other tutorials that you may want to see in the future. Hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.